Okay. Okay, good evening. Um, I call the meeting, to the select board meeting for August 2nd, 2022 to order. This meeting of the Hopkins Select Board is being held both in person and remotely using the video conference platform Zoom. All members participating in the meeting are present in the meeting room. The public has the option of attending in person here at Town Hall or via Zoom using the link posted in the meeting's agenda. This meeting is being recorded. And our first item on the agenda is executive session. So I would entertain a motion to move to executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Purpose 3 to consider strategy with respect to negotiations relative to non-union employees, town manager, fire chief, police chief, and collective bargaining relative to DPW, police, fire, and library unions. Because, so an, because an, wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> because an opening meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the board. Uh, reason two, pursuant to Master Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Purpose 6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate regarding 1, 69, 69 Franklin Road, <coughs> Assessor's Map U7, blo U7, Block 7, Lot 0, and 2, Jenner Property, 0 South Road, Assessor's Map R12, Block 9, Lot 0, because an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the board. Reason 3, to approve exec executive session minutes. Reason 4, to allow uh, Norman Kamalo and Elena Lazarus to participate in the executive session. And five, to convene an open session at the conclusion of executive session. And we will do a roll call vote. Um, so moved. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, oh, roll call though. Mary jo? Oh, the front of you, yes. Okay. Our friend. That's yes. Leo Kramer's a yes. Andy Manon, yes. Amy Roderbush, yes. Okay. We'll be back. Friendly amendment. Friendly amendment? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to add a friendly amendment to my motion, which is to also allow Ed Harrow to attend uh, the executive session. Okay. Second the amendment. Okay. All in favor, roll call. Her. The front of you, yes. Mr. Lee, yes. Your Kramer, yes. Should I do one yes? Amy Ritterbush, yes. Okay. And the amendment will reflect that she's attending the question regarding the Jenna problem. Okay. Okay. Okay, welcome. The select board is re reconvening now in open session, and I call the meeting to order. Our first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So the next item on agenda is the public forum. So please note that each person will have up to two minutes to speak at public forum. So beautiful. And everyone must start by stating their name and address. And first we'll go to members in the meeting room. Is there anyone in the meeting room who would like to speak at public forum? No? Okay. And is there anyone on Zoom that would like to speak? At public forum. Yeah. Okay. There is a hand raised. So we'll... Um, Okay. All right. So go ahead and state your name for the record, and you have two minutes. Oh. I think you might be muted. I think she's unmuted now. <laughs> Ellen, you can go ahead if you can hear us. We can't hear you, Alan. Is 
the volume down or something? Hey, Ben, check the volume. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so Ellen, if you could start again with your name and address. Okay, the, this is Ellen Rutter, 24 Forest Lane, and I only raised my hand because I couldn't hear you. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. I can hear you now. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, so Ellen. Thank you. Okay, and then I see no other hands raised at the moment, so I think we're done with public comment. Can you and no one else in the room. promote okay. me to uh, panelists? So, say it again. Promote me to panelist. I can follow the Zoom for you. Oh, uh, Ben can do it. Uh, oh, please do it. Can you promote her to a panelist so she can monitor the same as well? Okay, so um, next we will consider approving the consent agenda, which is to approve the, meet approve the meeting minutes from July 12, 2022, to approve a request from the Friends of Hopkinton to erect a 75-foot square banner over Main Street from September 4th through September 17th in advance of Family Day on September 17th, to appoint Ruth Knowles as Hopkinton representative on the Keefe Regional School Committee to a term expiring June 30th, 2025, mm -hmm. and to accept the resignation of Gary Russell from the Personnel Committee. Would any members like to vote on items separately? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to break out the uh, item B and D. B meaning the Friends of the uh, Banner? Yeah, the Banner and uh, the Resignation. Okay. All right, so can I, if no one wants to break anything else out, could I have a motion to approve items A and C? Oh, can I, I'm sorry, yep. can I break out C? Okay, so then we'll break them all out. Yes, yeah, right? Okay, so motion to approve the minutes from July 12th. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And next we'll take the um, request from the Friends of Hopkinton to erect a 75 foot square foot, seven square foot banner. So I just wanted to uh, take a moment to say thank you to the Friends of Hopkinton for, uh, for the Hopkinton Family Day. It's always a wonderful event. Um, it's always, we always have great attendance and um, I think it's just a, it's a, it's a wonderful day that uh, I thought would deserve a, a second, uh, just a moment to say thank you and, and acknowledge what a wonderful day it is. Yeah. And I think the banner is a great way to get visibility. Everybody will see it. Um, Absolutely. So. Yeah. I, all I wanted to do is just make sure that it's really up there because there's so much tall, heavy equipment going on right now in town. I don't want it to, to take, it, take off with it. That's all. <laughs> So can we have a motion to approve the Thank request you. for a banner? So move. Second. Second. Okay, all in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And do we owe you a happy birthday today, Patrick? Yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> okay, and next uh, to appoint Ruth Mills as the Hopkins representative on the Keefe Regional Technical School Committee. I just wanted to say thank you because Ruth Knowles, I think, has been doing this for a very nice. long time. Um, and she represents Hopkinton, and she invests her heart and soul into that role with Keith Tech. She does. And it's, um, it's truly important. And I, I, same thing, I just wanted to say thank you for somebody who has just been showing up and doing an important job for a very long time. Okay. Do we know how many years Ruth has done that? It's, it's, it's a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I thank her for her contribution, too. It, it may be around 27 years. 27. Oh, 27 years, my God. Madam Chair, I move to approve item C in the consent agenda. Okay, second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Next, we will accept the resignation of Gary Russell from the Personnel Committee. Yeah, so I just wanted to take, a, again, similar to uh, item C, I just wanted to thank Gary for, uh, for his work in the Personnel Committee. Um, you know, it's, we're all volunteers and taking the time to, to volunteer for our community, I think is, uh, it's, it's, it's just wonderful. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, uh, it's sad to see him leave, but um, I thank him for his service. Yep. yep. I just want to resonate and thank Gary for the same excellent service and thanks for stepping up. And I also want to add, I saw the note that uh, you'll be traveling. So when your travel sub goes down a bit, please come back for <laughs> working with us again. Um, thank you, we appoint I was going to say, I think when we appointed recently, there were two applicants for one spot on the personnel committee, so maybe the other person is still interested. We could come back later. 
Yep. Go ahead. I'm just going to make the motion that we accept Gary Russell's resignation. Second. And thank him very much for his service. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Okay, so that's the consent agenda. The next item was the housing authority appointment, but that was uh, scheduled for 650. Do we have to wait for exactly? I think we need to wait till 650, right? We don't have everybody here, I don't think. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Um, we so we're a little early. Public hearing the same, same with the public hearing, same with the libraries. Well, isn't this, how about, can we do the special town meeting? Say it again. Can we do the special town meeting? Yeah, probably. And I should announce for the public, the Board of Library Trustees has been postponed to a future meeting because um, the agenda for the Board of Library Trustees was not posted in time. So that will probably be at our September meeting. Uh, okay. So the special town meeting, though, that, that didn't have a public hearing associated with it. Okay. So now the board will discuss the uh, Thursday, August 18th, 2022 special town meeting, including articles, motions, and town meeting attendance, and consider signing the special town meeting warrant. If um, I may, if I may, how about item number nine, in, the, in case the, our colleagues from the school committee are planning to attend number eight? Sorry, you want us to do nine first? Yes, nine first. Okay. Yeah. The, in the motions document, it doesn't have numbers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so nine is the special warrant. town, the, the state primary. State primary. Okay, but is Connor here? Um, do we need Connor for this? Uh, I think we do need him for this. He was here. I don't know. Connor is outside. Oh. I think the chief's gonna go. You're gonna look for Connor. Okay. Well, I hope somebody brought some pinnacle cards. <laughs> I was about to say, how many just think about Connor? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll take and, a five minutes. And Pips, in the meantime, also. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yes, liaison in reports. If the board has any liaison okay. reports. So. I have a liaison report. Okay. Uh, I went to the housing uh, trust fund meeting. I attended that uh, last week, two weeks ago. And um, you know, really, it, it's been inactive uh, for the past two years. Not much has really happened. So John was, uh, was really helpful in, in kind of providing a lot of the background to all the new members. Um, it was not very well attended, but um, I think we're, we're starting from scratch. So I think it's... Uh, it's going to be a bit of a process uh, to kind of get everyone up to speed, but we're starting. And thank you, John, for. for and we'll be hiring that. a shared housing officer too, right? Um, yeah. So when that person's on board, then um, that will help as well. That will help yeah. definitely. Yeah. So they're going to get support for their meetings. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What's that? One way or another. One way or another. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's really good news. I mean, it, it was the first meeting. It was just starting out, and there's a lot of new people on it. Yep. So it, it's, uh, you know, th there'll be a bit of a learning curve, but I think as we as we get rolling, we should be in decent shape. Okay. That's awesome. Did anyone else have any liaison reports? I have some, but I can. Okay. No? Yes, busy meeting is on the 9th, so we'll know more. Say it again? Uh, the elementary school building committee meeting is on the 9th. Okay, yep. And I believe they... Um, they selected a designer today. I think we got a notice, um, yep. a preferred designer, so that's good. Yeah. <coughs> and Marathon Committee, we got a, a, a nice letter from Dottie Ferrer Wallace thanking us for supporting the membership. Okay. I had a couple things. Um, we got a notice about disability grants being available, and I think that's because we adopted that Commission on Disability bylaw. So I just, I, are we eligible to apply for grants, even though that committee hasn't <coughs> fully been formed yet? Yes, the town may apply for grants. Okay, great. Yeah. So well, maybe we can get something. And then uh, we were invited by the Worcester Red Sox, the Woo Sox, to have like a, a Hopkinton day. So I was going to discuss with the town manager's office um, if we could put that together. That sounded that like awesome. fun for the town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that'd be great. Did and they say then, a particular day or what's it? Did they say a particular day or no? I think we have to. It sounded kind of complicated, so I wanted to meet. Mm -hmm. and we, I guess we would pick the yeah. day. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I do want to add that the person who reached out is a graduate of Hopkinton High School and uh, went to work for the for the Woo Sox. So kind of cool. Nice to give my support. Who is that? I, I recognize the last name. name. Yeah, I um, I don't know that, but. Put you right on the spot. I didn't mean. Yeah. To. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I volunteered it, didn't I? <laughs> I can look it up. Uh, 
It's, it's Eric Olafson. I assume it's Ashley's yep. brother. Yeah. Okay. Then the two so we still need to wait. Hold on. I still had, okay. I had some more. Oh, okay. good. Okay. So I want to let everyone know that Owen Fitzpatrick is doing one of the Cultural Council murals at, at the MC Park, and he is having a day. Oh, yeah. I think it's Saturday. Yeah, I think it's August 6th from 10 to 12, That's and you cool. can come put your handprint on one of the murals with paint, and they'll, which they'll provide. And yeah. then he's going to write on top of it, we've got your back. Hopkins, Hopkins got oh, your back. Oh, nice. Yeah. nice. So if you're available, I would awesome. recommend doing that. Can't wait, I thought that would be fun. Mm -hmm. And then we got something from the Metro West YMCA about Advocacy Day on Tuesday, August 9th from 8.30 to 10.30. Anyone can go to that. And we just got one today, too, um, from the Chamber of Commerce. The new All Town Market yep. is opening. It's opening on the, is it the 18th? I it is on the 18th. 18th. Yeah. And both of those are during the workday, so I'm not able to go. If anyone else is able to go, that would be great. I can probably go. It's the 9th and the 18th? Yep. I have to say that, that the new All Town looks wonderful mm -hmm. it's really really good looking building and plan yeah it's come along nice um i think the planning board did a great job and the the access points and yeah it looks looks really nice i'm hoping it'll make the intersection less congested there'll be more ways to get in and out god willing <laughs> i'm just going to mention i'm not going to say much about it but um i've been notifying that there have been two more accidents that come along farms mm -hmm. crossing over <laughs> i don't know how we fix that <laughs> definitely dangerous Okay, that's the Lee's on reports and no Connor yet, right? In, in fact, Connor will be participating remotely. I oh. don't know if he's, he's on yet. Perhaps with the chair's permission, I can jump onto the town manager's report. You want to do the sure. town manager's report? Okay. Yes. And we have just two more minutes, so one sh a short item from there. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, Main Street Corridor Project, I included the report from Del Daltorio and Michelle Maddock. The bulk of the work in the coming days and coming weeks will be at the main intersection. PFAS update, we were celebrating our readings that were below the 20 parts per trillion. Uh, very briefly, we're back to over the 20 parts per billion. The last test done July 6th put us at 22.3 parts per trillion. We have also uh, identified the contractor to install or to provide the filtration vessels. That's just one component of the project. Uh, we are still shooting for May 2023 to complete the filtration construction process. Okay. And that cost was within what we had budgeted? So far, yes. So far, okay. Thank you very much for this cost. Yeah. And then on the MWRA connection, we had a great meeting with the Southboro Department of Public Works and Planning Board, um, and as well as the Capital Planning Committee. Uh, the main interest was how the Hopkinton project fits into Southboro's capital plan for their water infrastructure, the impact on the neighborhood, and obviously the question that you'll get in any community namely how well are we going to repair the roads after the project is done so it's a good start to a long discussion we will continue to keep the board informed okay. so the things they were asking for seems like could be we could work those out yes probably. okay to yep. the chair uh, norman there was uh, some information package presented to them can that be available for us and for or uh, maybe putting on our website too for the town Oh, yeah, we'll if you had a slideshow yes. or something. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Um, and then on the FY24 budget, I'm proposing a survey. First component of the survey, we look at the process as we have applied it in previous years and how best we can improve upon it. And then the second component uh, is a concept that I'm borrowing from my days at Oxford, America, and I believe now other towns are doing it is called um, participatory budgeting, where in fact, because we've been, we've had a good supply of free cash in the past years, we will earmark or designate a component of the free cash in the coming budget year for projects that are directly identified by the community. 
I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So the city of Cambridge does that. It's an amazing idea, and they get yeah. some really wonderful uh, projects. And how are you going to get input from um, the residents for this? I'm super excited about this. Yeah. No, we 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 we, we will identify a staff level a committee that will lay out the criteria. We will push the information requesting the projects uh, with a clearly outlined um, a framework as to what projects will qualify and will identify what groups in the community will qualify to submit proposals. That staff level committee will review the projects that come in, identify the winning project and then build it into our pay-as-you-go proposal that will be presented to the select board. And I assume as part of the survey, you'll have some ideas that the town has probably already thought of too, right, that people could vote for? We want the ideas to come from oh, the public. you want to have it blank mm -hmm. from scratch? Okay. Yes, we really want the public to like, tell us exactly what projects they would it's like amazing. us to find. It's really amazing. Okay. Yeah. I, I had a thought <laughs> that when we get closer to the end of this project, that perhaps we could do a public site walk with Mr. Del Torrio and, and take the public around and show them just what we've done and what we intend them to continue to do, but we have to do it much closer to the end of the project. In referring to the Main Street Corridor project or to the... Main Street Corridor, I think, right? Huh? You're talking about the Main Street Corridor? I'm talking about Main Street Corridor. Yeah, project. absolutely. I'm sorry. Yes, maybe we will. Ne not this fall, but next fall, maybe? Yep. Okay. Yes. That's it. All right, but now we're past 6, uh, 50, so we can have our Housing Authority meeting. So if we could have all members of the Housing Authority come up to the table, and then... Um, there's, are both applicants here tonight? I see one. That's one. Um, so maybe we could get one more chair because we'll need the applicant to come forward. Two. And then on Zoom, we have also John Morris and Eric Benneke, so, or Aaron, I mean, sorry. So John Morris is on the committee and Aaron is the staff person, I believe. Is that right? Executive director. Executive director. Okay. And um, do we have Joe Tolbert? I don't see him on there. No, not yet. You say Aaron's here? Aaron and John. Aaron's yeah, do you want to, should we call him or should we go ahead and get started? Uh, Joe Tobin, or, no. Okay, so the, let's see, let me go back. Okay. All right, so the Housing Authority members will join the select board to join the interview candidates London Dabana and Lucia Lopez to consider filling one Housing Authority board vacancy with a term to expire at the May 2023 town election. Okay, so the Housing Authority Board Chair can call her meeting to order. You have a quorum of three. Okay, I'd like to call the Housing Authority Board meeting to order. Okay, and then we'll have to select a, a chair for the joint meeting. So would you mind if I chair the joint meeting? Please do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then um, let's see. So it looks like Lucia's here. Do you want to come up to the table? And I don't see Linda on the Zoom. 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 Okay, but we did get a packet of information from Linda. She s submitted her resume or uh, and a letter of interest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does anyone have any questions? I think Punky had a question to start for the applicants. Um, how do we handle this with just um, one person attending? Just well, go, go ahead and ask it. Yeah, okay. if Linda joins, we'll ask I her just, too. Okay, I have a question I would have asked both, but um, Lucia, um, if you are appointed as a member of the Housing Authority Board, what would be your number one priority? Uh, so, thank you, Lucia. Um, I believe my number one priority would be understanding the needs of the residents um, and seeing how, as a housing authority, we can ensure that their needs are being met and if there are any needs that aren't being met, trying to find the way to address those needs within the parameters that we have for Thank you. Okay. Do any other members have questions? Uh, to the chair. Yep. Uh, thank you for stepping up and uh, uh, for the willingness to serve. I think you have an excellent background. Just for everyone's understanding, do you want to give an intro about yourself, your interest, and your background? Um, sure. So, um, in terms of my background, I'm originally from Texas. Uh, I came from a low-income household, so I know the benefits of the programs that families need in order to housing has always been an interest 
mine for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but uh, I did urban planning at MIT and I was in charge of different assignments for my dorm. And when I got my master's in education, I chose a program that had a lot of flexibility so that I could meet the interests that I had in housing as well as the interests that I had um, with working with underserved communities. And so I did that before I worked um, at the Berlin Institute as the diversity program coordinator um, for their minority action plan to bring underrepresented minorities into genetic research. Um, and then at Stanford, I got a master's in education. And uh, I did some research in housing while I was there, uh, as well as taking courses um, that focus on multicultural issues in higher education. And I feel like this uh, housing authority position kind of combines those two interests in a way that I haven't really combined before. Um, so I'm very excited for the opportunity uh, to serve on the housing authority. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have questions? Before? Sure. Uh, um, it's not a question, but I would say that Punky and I and John and Joe were very excited with Lucia's. Um, she brings actually hands-on knowledge that none of us have. Um, different than a resident that lives at the Housing Authority and also that she's also a landlord right there in that neighborhood. So she's, and she was a neighbor of Becca Hoffman's um, at one point. But the, um, having the educational background she has in urban housing planning and having a focus on affordable housing is an asset we haven't had. So this is really this is really wonderful. Um, I'm really happy to see you here, Lucia. Um, maybe uh, I'm going to take you. I'm going to take advantage of your background and um, ask you just you know if you had like a near-term sort of strategy for Hopkinton to try and um, make progress in um, having more layers of affordability in housing and and increase you know, our potential for diversity in the town, what would, what would you think of or what would you suggest? So I do think um, one of the things that Irfan mentioned uh, in terms of the affordable, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the name, but... Um, affordable Housing Trust Fund? Or yeah. Sorry. The Affordable, affordable housing, housing Trust Fund? So the Affordable yeah. Housing Trust Fund, that's one of the things that I've looked into since moving to Hopkinton and I feel like it has been very not active as we said. Um, and I feel like there is potential for Hopkinton to increase its affordable housing availability. Um, I don't know in terms of vacancy or things like that, but one of the things that I've learned uh, as a member, but I don't know how much can be done in a year, but I do think in terms of just getting people more active and getting kind of brainstorming together the different people who have the various backgrounds, whether it's on different committees or boards, um, to see where it is that Hoffington is lacking and what can be done better. Because I know for myself as a landlord, we don't we we don't really interact with other landlords in town. Um, and so it comes up occasionally where people ask me about Section 8 and things like that. Um, and I feel like you know, that's another potential and a group of people that haven't really been brought into the opportunity to consider how we can help low income residents in town. I'm really excited. And it comes at a great time when the Affordable Housing Task Force and a, a shared resource is coming on board. So I'm, I'm excited to hear about your background and some of the ways that some of this work might be able to come together. Awesome. Okay. Sorry. So not really a question, but just more of a comment. I'm thrilled to see that you're applying. Uh, your background is is uh, incredibly impressive, and um, I think you'd be you'd be great. Um, you know, there's there's a few challenges that we're facing. At least when I'm, you know, when I took a look at our initial meeting at the the, the trust fund, is yeah, we're sitting on a pile of cash, but at the same time, you know what. <laughs> With the skyrocketing prices in town, um, 
you know, I see that as a huge challenge as, and, and being able to find something affordable. And, you know, I'm sure as you know, the, uh, you know, what is considered affordable is 80% of the, the median. And the median, if it's at a million, well, 800,000 is still a lot of money, you know. So, um, but, you know, but it's a challenge that we all face and, and, and we'll have to tackle it as we go forward. I think when you talk about that, that's one of the things that I feel like, you know, if you were to talk to individual kind of landlords in town, that's one of the things that we come up against is the low income individuals. And I think you kind of find a way to funnel the interest of investors in Hopkinton to potential buyers in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we had another hearing scheduled for seven. So if we, if everyone, if we had, I think we probably had enough questions. If everyone, mm -hmm. said, we could probably move it forward. I think maybe what so we had to do is open the meeting, the the seven o'clock meeting, and then post, um, put it on hold so we can take our, our vote. Okay. So I'm looking at a clock, wondering what the the, the, the is. clock is wrong. It's, yeah. 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 it's a stop yeah. clock, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I would like to open the public hearing for the Section 15 Packet Store Alcohol License at 92 West Main Street and um, just put that temporarily on, on hold until we finish this agenda. Can we go No, we'll come back to it. We'll open the hearing and then oh, we'll come back. Yeah. So we'll come back to it in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So the hearing is open. We don't need to vote on that, right? No, no, no. No, stay with stay. We just right? have to, vote to say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so now we'll go back to this. Um, so before we make a motion, we would like to ask each board member to indicate the candidate that they prefer. We'll go around, and once we have a majority, then we'll make a motion. So, um, okay, would you like to begin? Who would you like? To, who would you prefer for this? I one? highly vote Lucia. Okay. Lucia. Okay. Lucia. So we're going with Lucia. Okay, Lucia. 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 Thank you for being yeah. here. And we have two right. people on Zoom: John and Aaron. Okay. So now we officially need a motion. Uh, John. John. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, John Morris. Sorry. sorry. I'm going to vote Lucia. Okay. Thank you. And. That was the only one on Zoom. Aaron's not at all. Okay, so now we need a motion um, motion to appoint Lucia Lopez to the Housing Authority. So moved. Second. Okay, and then all in favor? Aye. 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 We, we, I think we may need to do the roll call because we have one member remote, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Good okay, call. so yep. go ahead, one at a time. All, how do you vote? So you just yes. Okay. So say your name. Oh, yes. <laughs> so yes. Punky, draw yes. You have to say your name I too. Yes. Darlene Hayes, Lucia. Okay. Final Manan, yes. Mary Jo Lafrenia, yes. Amy Rodobush, yes. Rafana Sula, yes. Euro Kramer, yes. Okay. Great. Did we get John? And John Morris. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. And then um, we did the welcome. Welcome. Thank you. 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 Okay, and then um, just you need to um, adjourn. You guys need to adjourn your meeting, I think, right? I um, will um, make a motion to accept. No, I have to say um, to adjourn. I have to adjourn. To, uh, um, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. Second. No, you got to move it. You have to. I move the motion. And okay. Then John. 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 All in favor of adjourning? Do a roll call. Okay. They have to roll call. Do a roll call. It's quick. Just yes. Nancy Draw, yes. Darlene Hayes, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. John. Yes. Aye. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now we'll come back to the Section 15 Packet Store License for 92 West Main Street. And we had information in our packet on that. Is there a representative here from 92 West Main? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we already called the public hearing to order, so we'll begin with an applicant presentation. Could you guys, could you all state your names for the record and then uh, get a little, uh, give us an overview? Sure. Uh, Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is John Aida McDermott Colton Miller, located at 28 State Street, Boston, uh, representing Global One Teller Group Corp. Uh, to my left is um, 
Courtney Pierce. Oh, I'm sorry, Courtney's over there. Is Tapitha Estate, who's the proposed manager of record as well as the store manager. And to her left is Courtney Pierce, the territory manager. Um, so we have a couple matters before you uh, for a vote. Uh, the first, which is the most obvious, is an alteration of premises. Uh, so this is the site of the, um, again, they held the license for Montella Group Corp. They raised that building and built a brand new building, uh, which we're now going to All Town Fresh. Uh, All Town Fresh is a brand that is the Montella Group Corp uh, company. They have, I think, five or six other All Town Freshes throughout Massachusetts. Two other locations at the present time also sell beer and wine, uh, which is Plymouth and Air. Um, and Tabitha has had the opportunity to be at the air location for several weeks training and preparing to be the store manager as this um, obviously store is closed, but she does have the experience. She is TIP certified and does have the um, knowledge regarding the sale and service of alcohol. She's familiar with the, the rules of the board and the laws of the Commonwealth as it pertains to that. Um, so the, obviously we're very excited. Um, this is a brand new store. I provided you some of the, the photos. All Town Fresh is, is a newer concept and it's not really a convenience store anymore. It's really just a kind of like a fresh open air market. Um, there's certainly traditional convenience store items, but they also want to promote and push that it's locally sourced um, food um, and you can get meals ready, ready to order, um, pre-prepared meals uh, in addition to the regular traditional store items. So they're going to have, I think, do you have like people preparing foods and um, on site and on top of that. So, so it's really a great concept. Um, as you alluded to before, obviously they had the opportunity with the, with the actual physical space of the location, so it's a great layout. Uh, a lot more accessible for you know, motor vehicles and, and customers to come in and out. So that the, uh, where the station, you know, the gas station and the pumps are on one side and then obviously the building uh, for anyone who wants to come in can easily you know, access that by a parking. Um, so part of that again is alteration of premises to include obviously the new floor plan and footprint. Um, the alcohol, which is beer and wine, will be um, as you come in in the kind of the back left corner. There's four coolers, uh, refrigerated coolers that will house the beer. There'll also be on the floor um, uh, sales area for for beer as well as wine, and it's all centrally located. So. Um, Global Montel prides itself on having a stellar rep uh, record in the state with no violations. And this is really a state-of-the-art facility. It'll have a POS system that any product that is run out that's for uh, either wine or any age restricted product um, at all gets run out in the system. So it prompts that sales uh, clerk to physically check an ID, put in the valid date of birth, and compare it to the person in front of them. So, they try to take out that, um, you know, any error that may happen. And any hours of operation that it's not permissible, meaning after 11 p.m. or before 8 a.m., the system will actually lock that sales up so the POS system cannot process that sale of air or wine. Um, uh, Cordy and TAP, they indicated that they'll have a um, self-checkout, but they confirmed to me that the self-checkout will not be allowed to process any of the sales of beer or wine. So they'll have to go to the, the one of the to do that. Um, obviously very well lit, bright, open, good lines of sight from, from all the staff. All the staff will be trained and TIP certified. Um, and uh, you know, they have security cameras and everything else and, and they'll lock up their product that's when it's not uh, in, in the storage and when it's not in use. So very excited. Um, as you guys alluded to as well, there is a grand opening on the 18th. Uh, so fingers crossed we'll get everything back in the state, which we should be able to uh, push that through hopefully um, and in, if I missed anything if there's anything else you want to add or no we're just we're very excited it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a great place I hope you all come visit <laughs> yeah, all, all the food is um, we've been here and curated chef driven locally sourced so a lot of the product that you'll be seeing is nothing that you've seen anywhere else um, so we're really excited it's really to not um, sacrifice healthy eating for convenience so we do have a lot of healthy offerings as well that will go very really great for the and just to clarify, you're cl requesting a change of name to what was the name before? Yeah, it was Mobile Mart. Um, oh, Mobile Mart. Yeah. So okay. this is again one of their brands. They obviously, with the build out of the store, they wanted to be consistent with that. So. Okay. And so, do we have a staff report? No. 
Mr. Yes, um, we did circulate the application to the permitting offices. Um, we did not receive any adverse comments. However, I, I do have uh, two general questions. Uh, one being, this is going to be, is what we have heard so far, family friendly, pedestrian friendly establishment. When I look at the layout, I just want to make sure that during the times when you have young people in the store that they don't have direct access to the areas where you store your alcohol. Do you want to just walk the board and the public as to how you're going to manage that? So storage itself will be in the back room or in a secured room. There's a locked cooler that they can access that. Uh, for In terms of the sales area where it would be, it's all centrally located. So um, the only reason someone would be there is if they were either an adult, a parent, or someone else if they're underage. In other words, where that is, they're all in the back corner. So if they see people there, and again, they have lines of sights, and, and usually one or two staff members, I think. <coughs> um, so any area they're not going to target by putting candy or things like that that would attract those you know, underage kids. Um, and they've done this before, and they've had success in all their other stores, and they, they're aware of that, and the staff is very much aware of that. So there's no way to have a separate room for that. It's just it's not practical. It's just not the way it, it would deteriorate the look of the store as well. But they're very cognizant of that, and they have it's just a certain area where um, the bear and wine is, and it's not in any way. You'd have to go out of your way if you're a child to like, go in that back area by themselves. Yeah. It's just a back portion. It's an open portion. We did have a map in our packet. Would it be helpful to put that on the yeah, screen? Yeah. It was. It's on page 40 of the packet. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Is that too hard to get on the screen? Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Well, do you have an unrelated yeah. question? Yeah. 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 Okay, so Mary Jo, I'll ask her, her other question uh, first. You said you were your self checkout? There's one self checkout counter. And that is not going to check out any liquor. It will, at not, all. Be, it will not be able to correct. No age restricted items are allowed through that process there. Okay. Question. Be sure. right. yeah. Okay. Through the chair. <clears throat> so I drive by it every day. Um, <laughs> I'm following it. I'm excited to see it. I do notice that uh, you have outdoor seating, um, and um, you know, with the with the food service and the alcohol service, is there a, is this is there a proposal to allow on-site consumption of alcohol? Absolutely not. So uh, it's it would be against the license as well. This is an off-premise yeah. license only. Right. So the way, the way they've handled that, um, certainly in Plymouth, and Courtney can speak specifically to that, is they have signage up um, that specifically prohibits any opening or consumption of that alcohol. Um, and anyone purchasing will be reminded as well, you know, that if they see a meal and say, hey, can we go sit or whatever, they'll be reminded that they cannot open that up at all on the premises. We will also, um, the signage is distributed throughout the patio. Um, we have like little table tents that says, you know, no, you know, on premise, you know, you can't consume alcohol on premise. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of ties into what he was asking about children. There, there shouldn't be any opening of alcohol containers actually on the premise. Um, so we have staff that, like he was mentioning, John was saying um, that just, you know, we're always on the floor. We're very um, interactive with our guests. So there shouldn't be any misses on that. Um, and same thing with the patio. We have very, we have very nice cameras that we actually have as well. So staff is always doing those as well. Okay, so we have the map on the screen now. Can you walk us through where is the alcohol versus, and where is the checkout? I can see it. Yep, so in the, it looks like the highlighted area should be, which is the back left. Yep. Um, your front doors are facing West Main Street. Um, so the checkout is to the right uh, like along that. Right now, I think it shows two POS systems, if I can read that. There's actually a third at the very end, which is the self-checkout. Okay. And then where is the exit to the patio? Um, actually, you have to go out the front and around the back. Can you go out the back? Okay. Nope, no. just the front. So you have to go out the front, um, and then 
the patio is where it says office and is it utility? Maybe in the upper right? That's the patio area. Oh, but you can't get out that no, way. No, it's not on the top. I didn't mean it's, right. it's off to the right. 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 Okay. And the reason we didn't want to, certainly the seating's there. We didn't want to put it on the map because we're not licensing that because it's certainly not part of the, um, you know, alcohol portion of that. Okay. Does that answer your question? Or do you have more? Yes, no, I think it does. Uh, I do have a, a follow-up question. Do you have any intention to sell cordials or liqueurs? No. So um, right now it's just wine and malt, and there's no intention to do so. None of the other stores have that. They may have one store in their ownership that's all alcohol, which is a full, but there's no intention. All Tom Fresh is wine and malt, so. Okay. And then my last question is, again, to welcome you to the town and share with you that the town has a very strong interest in understanding the traffic patterns along that portion of West Main Street. Uh, we would be hoping that your team will be willing to cooperate with the town as we proceed forward with our plans. We understand you have two driveways that are permitted both are bi-directional, and that in itself will be pulling a great deal of traffic onto West Main, and in some cases allowing people to turn, coming off from your side, uh, left, uh, going eastbound. That remains a great concern for the town, including the fact that uh, the first driveway, uh, if you are coming from the town centre going westbound, is very close to the intersection. And that's an intersection that is bringing in a great deal of traffic coming from um, Elm Street, turning, going towards 495. So we really are seeing your location as one that would be of interest to the town as we proceed with our plans to address the overall traffic circulations in the area. It's a very accident prone area. Right. Yeah. 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 The egress is on Elm Street, correct? Uh, yeah, there's egress yeah. on Elm Street. Yeah. 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 It's both on Main Street. Street. Just, just, oh, right. just, just to be clear, it's on Elm Street and also on West Main Street. Yeah. Yeah. But the one that the exit closest to the intersection, it's that, not supposed to be a left turn. It, it's it's only an entrance, I think, right? Yeah. It's only yeah. an I entrance. Think it's on. a left turn. Uh, so it's not supposed to be an exit. But the other one on West Main it Yes, is further accident. away. It, it, and it is a very accident, but that doesn't necessarily solve it, but it mitigates it a little bit. Mm -hmm. The one on farther farther away from the intersection can be a left turn. And um, it's, it's... It can be, no, because there's a, there's a median in the middle. I think it's you can only turn right out of it. Both of them? Are going to it, like the one that's closest to 495? I don't know if it's... Are they both just right turn only? In the front. Yeah. I mean, in fact, yeah, in, in, in fact, I, I think my point here being we're putting you on notice that the town has right. extensive plans <laughs> yeah. regarding traffic management in that area and we'll certainly be reaching out to whoever is responsible for, uh, for the site uh, to share with you our plans. Part of our plan is to uh, install barriers that will prohibit left turns going eastbound yeah. in that section. But I think you have the the egress in the back, yeah, in the back yeah. which right. I know if I'm if I had a choice of yeah, turning left, left back, I would rather right, yeah. I'd rather go out back and turn around and deal with the yeah. intersection. Right. So it's the sensible thing, Irfan. Well, I drive like a grandmother, so yeah. the, the, you know, it's, it's, it's what I would choose as well. But we know not everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> it is a, it is a really highly and, and pretty pretty dangerous spot. There's been some really dangerous. Things. All right. Yep. Um, uh, well, just wanted to understand a little bit your uh, operating hours. Uh, it's 8 to 11 most of the days, and on Sunday, 8 to 10, or 10 to 11, something like that. Right, that would be for the sale of alcohol. Sale of alcohol. Uh, this is a 24-hour store, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, that's what I thought. Now, yeah. these hours for uh, alcohol, is that consistent with the other such um, uh, stores in the vicinity? It is, yes. Okay. And it's what's permissible by law. Okay. Yeah. Not asking for anything beyond. Beyond, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome to Hopkinton, and Thank you. very excited to have you. Yeah. Thank you. So, Thank you. Through the chair, I just have one yeah, other one question. More? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Ms. Lazarus, I, I recall that we already issued a license to Global Montello. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is this was an existing transfer. 
Um, so they're altering the premises. Nine months ago, ten months ago, mm -hmm. from the existing owner of the mobile mart. So uh, Global took over and was operating it for a short period of time before they raised the building. So okay. they're already issued the license. So although we're well, it is a brand new naming concept. We're already part of the town and community. That's a whole new layout. It's just, the truth. It's just a new building, new, exactly. new yeah. management. Okay, gotcha. So today we're changing. Changing the business name, altering the premises on the interior, and changing the manager. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and so now this is a public hearing. So if the board members are done with questions, we'll open it up to the public. Are there any members of the public in the audience that have questions? Okay. And anyone on Zoom, if you have a question, raise your hand. And I'm not seeing anyone. Okay. So then um, I guess Madam we can... Chair, I move to close the public hearing. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay. And then um, let's say deliberation and vote. Any other discussion before a vote? I'm all set. I'm good. I move to Madam Chair, I move to approve the changes to the Section 15 wine and, al wine and malt alcohol license consisting of alteration of the premises, change of the manager to Tabitha uh, Lassate, and change of the business name to All Town Fresh Hopkinton. Second that. Would it be appropriate to add a condition that, with the understanding that the town will be coming, um, that we'll maybe revising the traffic management in that area? Or no. not appropriate to add that? Okay. So, we, do you second it? I okay. It's coming. All right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. So, I wish you good luck. I just checked my calendar. I'm, I apologize. I'm not able to be there on your, your grand opening. I hope that a lot of people are able to come by. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful start to the business there. This is beautiful. Thank the inside so so is on the outside. Yeah. So it looks awesome. Please stop by. Please stop by. <laughs> Planning on coming. If I'm driving east, thank you. that's where I get my gas. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, quick question. <laughs> so we try, I drive a uh, electric. So do I continue to use your squeegee, or do I have to buy gas to buy it? Oh, no, you can use your squeegee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Will you have electric vehicle charging stations? No. Yeah. Not yet. Okay. What's that? Is that what you asked? Are you having electric vehicle charging stations there, oh. or no? Um, no. Question. I don't think there's any plans. But. Not yet. We do have it at some other locations, but not for this one. Oh, there's more and more demand. So <laughs> okay. Excellent. And then for um, we well, said this before, but in case anyone, oh, so you're all set. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you so Thank much. You. For anyone listening at home, um, the Board of Library Trustees appointment has been postponed to the, a future meeting, probably September. Okay. And now next is special town meeting. So I think Connor is here. We could liven him up. And Rada, the moderator, is here. Okay, so now we're going to discuss the August 18th special town meeting, um, including the articles, motions, and town meeting attendance, and consider signing the special town meeting warrant. Oh, can we liven up Connor and Ellen? Uh, I don't see Connor. What's that? Did we need Connor for that? Yep, he's, he's on the Zoom. Oh, okay. Okay, okay there they are. There they are. They're coming in. Okay, so there is only one warrant article, which was for additional funding for the Marathon School Edition. Uh, the motion will contain dollar amount and the account transfer information. Um, do we have it, any updates on that, or just it's just what we know, right? It's going to be eight hundred fifty thousand, right? That is correct. The recommendation to transfer from the school stabilization fund. That is correct. Okay, the transfer. It's not an appropriation. Yeah. Okay, and then the special town meeting location was proposed for the high school field house because the both the auditoriums are um, under construction this summer. So that's Excellent. okay. And then the time is proposed for 7 p.m., which is the usual time, which I think makes sense. People will be expecting that yeah, time. Wow. All right. So, um, are you asking us to adjust the quorum or or anything? Or we should I ask the town. Yeah, yeah, and PFC. If, if that's the question that the board would like to discuss, that's a fair question. Namely, is the board willing to consider a different quorum threshold? Okay. So I guess I would like to hear from, well, do any board members have any questions first, and then I'll ask Connor and Alan for their questions or comments? No. 
Yeah. So I don't know how we consider a different threshold with the charter, or you just can. At the uh, big, the governor or no, the legislature because extended. Because of COVID, the legislature extended some provisions. Of yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. that that's kind of, I don't, I don't know. For me, that doesn't really okay. fit because we're going to be in some, but that's me. Yeah, yeah so I think that we can get a quorum. Our kids are back in school, and they should be, and we're excited about that. And we're going to be inside. I think that people should show up. Get, bring your friends, bring your neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> so do any of the board members have questions before I ask Connor and Ellen to weigh in? No, I think. Okay. Um, so Ellen, our town moderator, do you have any questions or comments? Um, I had an opportunity yesterday to speak with um, Norman and Connor, and I think we're all on the same page about using um, or, or, or keeping the quorum as it is, I believe 128 people. This is a really important and exciting um, project that we need people to you know, participate in, and we're looking forward to a robust discussion. And Connor, did you have any questions or comments? Uh, as Alan said, we uh, had the opportunity to talk about it, and I think we were all in agreement on that this is a, it's all the issues that we typically face when trying to get a quorum are relatively non issues at this point. Uh, the biggest one being time. It, this is going to be such a short time commitment for most folks. We're going to get in and out of one article, uh, you know, answer some questions, quick presentation, done. I, I think we're going to be uh, pretty, pretty able to get this all done very easily in a short period of time. I don't think it will be an issue with the forum. Okay, great. And I think you, you probably all saw I put some s slides in the age, um, in the meeting packet about statistics for town meeting. And um, about 90% of the town has not attended any of the last six town meetings and especially people under 35 don't usually attend and, um, and people who are new to town have lived in town less than five years are very unlikely to attend. So I think this is a really good opportunity for people in those groups who have maybe been nervous to come before. This is a short meeting, just one night. You could kind of get the feel for a town meeting and then if you, you'll be more comfortable trying to come in May if they come, you know, in August. So I'm going to definitely be spreading the word about that and I hope everyone else will. I've been chatting with Ellen and also the school committee chair about how we can spread the word. That's Let's awesome. get the words out, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think it is really challenging. I remember, I mean, maybe before I was 35 and had a pass of kids, too. I don't know how many times I got there with great consistency either. It's hard. Mm -hmm. But this is a great way. Um, and I think that we have a guide, a citizen's guide to town meeting, don't we? That we could, people could access online and, and also just get a little intro to it. And, and ask your friends and neighbors or email the board. We're happy to give you the little short course. It's not really not really challenging and it can be kind of can't be great fun. So definitely come to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Special town meeting. Okay. So um, So when you oh, Madam okay. Chair, I well, I was just doing it get a little something from my youth that I was I was brought up to believe that um, Town meeting and, and the government participation was our responsibility. It wasn't something that we could just do or not do if we cared or we didn't care. We were responsible for the running of our town and our country. And uh, we seem to have lost a lot of that. You know, to dovetail on that, I also want to say that <laughs> town meeting is the most uh, raw example of democracy it in the works. And it's, uh, it really is something to behold, to, to see how we, really is. you know, it gives us a chance to. Very about stars, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Absolutely. So with that, uh, Madam Chair, I move to sign the August 18, 2022 special town meeting warrant. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Aye. Well, the challenge is for all of us to remember to go, too, because, you know, it's in yep. the middle of the summer. It's easy to forget when it's an off-time yep. vacation week kind of thing. Yep. Don't yes. worry, we'll remind you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ellen and I will be emailing you all, <laughs> messaging. Okay, so the um, next is the state primary election warrant, so we'll keep the town clerk on for that. So um, it was in our packet, right? Do we have any questions for the town clerk? Just a whole lot of happy congratulations and good luck. That's it, yep. <laughs> yep. 
a pretty standard, it's just going to be, it's just a list of all the offices that are on for the primary. Uh, we only have uh, two party primaries on for this election. Uh, a few of them, the other minor parties have lost some uh, membership, so it's just going to be Democratic or Republican primaries. Okay. And uh, do you have you decided on the early voting hours yet? Um, yep. So uh, the early voting hours are going to be uh, from, they're going to start on August 27th, and that's a Saturday. That will also be the deadline to register to vote for it and change your party if you want to. Uh, that's going to be starting at 10 a.m. at Town Hall, and it will go until 4 p.m. Uh, that will be again on Saturday. And then after that, it won't be on Sunday, but it will be for the Town Hall normal office hours for the remainder of the week until Friday. Okay, so that's interesting. So the deadline you registered to vote is just one week prior to the um, to the election. So is that the same for the special town meeting? Can you register to vote up to a week prior to the meeting? Yep, 10 days. 10 days, okay. So what would the date be for the special town meeting? I should have asked that earlier. It should be August 8th. Yeah, well, or maybe the, so the 10th? Or sorry, the 8th, right? Is it yeah, 10 so business days? The 18th, so. The 8th. So it's 10 calendar days. Calendar days, okay. Oh, calendar. Okay. I would still say the seventh, though, right? So, if the meeting is the eighteenth, people could register up until the eighth. Then, is that right? You, you do, there's a weekend in there, so you can. Yeah, that would be day. correct. It's kind of neutral. That good weekend holiday, like that. So that's why, even though know, the tenth day for the election lands on a Saturday, we still so the, the new votes act expanded this and they made it so that uh, voter registration hours on the 10th day before from 9 to 5. So the town clerk's office will be open on Saturday the 27th from 9 to 5, uh, with early voting only occurring from 10 to 4, though, uh, just because of the difference in hour allotment there. Okay, but for the special town meeting, it's August 8th? Is that what you said? Did yes, it will be August 8th for the special town meeting. That's really great because I thought people, it was going to be too late for people to have registered for yeah. it, but we can even tell new people mm -hmm. that just moved they can still register. So okay. okay. And sorry, Connor, you might have touched it. What is the, when does the early voting begin? 27th. Uh, early voting will begin for the, the primary. Uh, so by mail, it will already be coming out in mail very shortly. And then for uh, the primary in person, early voting hours will be August 27th. Thank okay. you. Great. Okay, so if there are any further okay. questions, we'd have a motion to sign the September 6th state primary. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we sign the September 6, 2022 state primary election warrant. I second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? And I think we did these on reports. Is there nothing else? Yeah. yeah. We did time uh, manager. We did. Well, any future? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Connor. Good luck. All right. Any future board agenda items? Um, that are not already covered? We lost? Yes. Any future agenda items that have not been brought up yet? Uh, uh, one thing I just wanted to briefly bring up, maybe um, I'd be interested to hear from DPW about the state of the condition, safety, roads, traffic, uh, and our plan for sidewalks. Uh, we used to hear that through the hearings in appropriations, and I haven't caught up for some time. So I think um, from the residents, we are hearing uh, about various safety issues or various intersections where there are more accidents than other places, uh, and we got emails and other sort uh, forms of communication. So I'd be interested to know from you know DPW to start with that what do they feel is the state of the things, where are the opportunities to make things better, and what is our plan uh, around it for future. Be and I think the planning board had done a survey on sidewalks not too long yeah. ago, right? So maybe maybe Gary could come sometime in the fall. Yeah. Maybe they'll be bringing it to town meeting. And I don't know if they are, but it would be good to hear. Yeah, yeah, it's a good survey for preferences. In in fact, Gary presented a wonderful. He did come to our meeting on yeah. very recently, so we will share that document. I, I actually was in the planning board that time, and <laughs> I got to see that closely, yeah. and it's a really good one if you haven't seen it. But I was more referring to the state of the town in terms of uh, roads and highways and traffic conditions and safety um, scenarios. 
Uh, and I think part of it is also sidewalks. Just to be clear, that's kind of what I'm asking. Yes, if, if I may, um, we do have, as part of our annual calendar, the pavement management program evaluation and assessment. Uh, let me chat with John, see when that is scheduled, when the results will be out, and we can present those to the board. That would be a great, yeah. I remember John did a wonderful presentation to yeah. AC time to time, so yeah. that would be helpful. Yeah, and I do find it ironic. I know I got a lot of complaints from residents in February and March about the state of the roads and when was their road going to get paved. And then in July, when we start paving all the roads, then everybody's upset that, why are we doing it? It's ironic. dash quickly and it wasn't going my way. Say it again. I was, I was cursing the folks in Westboro for their improvement. Oh, right. And I've, I've hit some bad traffic in Framingham with roads closed, too. So <laughs> yeah, someone is all about paving. It is what it is. <laughs> Okay. Any more future agenda items? No, I have, a, I have a question for the chief of police. <laughs> Do we have we have a list of accidents in town, places that have more accidents than others? Oh, well, they've got some. That's all. I, I just wonder if we have. A, <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, the roads. What what we should be thinking about for better safety conditions <laughs> for you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so we. As some of you know, we have a new software program for our records management. Uh, the prior one was very functional with accidents, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm looking forward to using the new one, and even to a point where we could share the information with the public and it will be interactive. So you could build maps of incident types around in your neighborhood without even requesting anything from the police. Um, that's something we're working to. We're still in the first phase of the rollout where we're getting functionality out to the units and to dispatch. Dispatch is probably 95% done. We have a lot of work to do in patrol and then to bring that, those applications into the cars is where we're moving now. But on the back end, I'm working with Josh and um, Lucas. We had been working on a transparency portal where we could build this, but uh, as recently as 9 o'clock this morning, I had a meeting with the vendor to discuss the customer service portal that will also accommodate data distribution uh, automatically as well as be a source for routine services like house checks and um, report a lost phone, you just need an incident number. Um, so it's good. Um, it's going to be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think people right. are really going to appreciate that. Yeah. Good. And, uh, when is I'm, I'm looking at the maps and we do have some data point problems where we're working through where data is stored in different points and the maps of work we're working on and that was the topic of the conversation this morning. Otherwise I'd show it to you, mm -hmm. but, but we have incidents in foreign countries that I think, don't think are ours, so we're working through it. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. But it, it, it will, I'll bring, I'm gonna, my intention is to bring the uh, customer service portal forward to you and kind of be the launching. We'll, I'm hoping to launch from here and then launch a, a <coughs> public service advisory campaign after that. But I think this should be the kickoff point since uh, it's been a, it'll be the capstone of a very big project. That, that would be great. And when, what is the timeline looking like? So we're the first vendor in Massachusetts. So we are doing a lot of work just to make software compliant. It's a Connecticut product. But the reason it was selected by the selection team was because of the forward-facing data that it shared, was able to share with the public. By far, all the software packages we looked at. So we are working intensely. We meet weekly. Um, our list of, our hot list of, of fixes is, is pretty big still. But um, we look to get the, a group together, a core cool group together to really kick off, off the uh, customer service portal this summer, and, and hopefully, um, they, they were already, I've already been in it and working on it and, and putting things on the list, the task list, and uh, I think once we get going, we'll be at least be able to bring out components and, you know, modules out know, to the public. Okay. The easiest parts, we, we can build out the first phase of, of the incident reporting, low-level incident reporting, just need incident report, house check, that aspect of it, I, I will have that um, definitely in this calendar year. It's, I don't want to over-promise by saying the vendor can do something that they, I, until they tell me that it works. 
No, thank you. It's very forward looking. And yeah. a follow up question, if I may, is um, uh, until we have that, when we hear um, certain areas that are you know prone to accidents or they're you know danger zones, and I think you are aware also there were some petition that came out with hundreds of signatures on certain. How do we go about validating those, understanding the problem, and then you know going for remediation? Just in general, while we don't have these type of software. Sure. So, as we work through that, and I don't know, maybe I'm getting myself into more here, but um, I used utilized an intern, and we I, I took all the data from 2018, a series of questions, and simply put it in a Google form that I could share with you. And it, it analyzes exit in Cumberland Farms, left turn, was it a side impact, um, was there a transport to the hospital. There's been 116 accidents since 2018 in that particular area. It is that area in general, in general even beyond those two stores, is a high volume area. Um, we transport about 7% of the, of the people that get hit because they are a side impact, which is the least favorable type of crash you could have because the cars were built front and rear, you know, front first, then, then safety in the rear. And uh, it wasn't, think about when airbags started to appear on the sides, it wasn't until you know, a few years ago. But the, um, you know, I'm trying to think of the other data points. But this year we've had four accidents, three of them where left turns out of come on funds. Yeah. If, if I may, um, in fact, part of our conversation is transitioning from referring to these incidents, incidents, um, not referring to them as accidents, but, crashes. but rather as yeah. crashes. Yeah. Uh, our, our approach to public safety is that most of the issues we're dealing with are preventable. So as part of our public education, we're referring to crashes and not accidents. That's number one. Number two, in terms of the framework, we do conduct a regular study through MassDOT to identify the crash-prone locations in town. It's a regular study. The last one was done just before we, I think, did the last evaluations for the Main Street Corridor project. Instances where we receive reports similar to the ones we have received from uh, residents regarding the Cumberland Farms area, we engage our internal team, the police chief, the DPW director, the principal planner, uh, the uh, town engineer, uh, as well as the town manager's office. The vendor as well has to come out. It, we have an engineer the firm. It, 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 exactly, yes. Um, we, we then formulate here the questions that need to be answered. If we need to bring in a consulting engineer, we do so. In this case, we did. Uh, in fact, not only did we bring one, we brought two consulting engineers to look at the issue. They provided us some suggestions, realizing that in this case, the property ownership is with the town as well as with the state agency. So we have, we're now engaging with the state agency in terms of what the solutions could be, including the broader, robust discussion regarding the, the Lamba, Elm, and West Main intersection. So, uh, yeah, the framework again is regular study with must DOT. I done, I think, every 10 years. When issues come up, we meet internally, identify the need for external help if need so, and then engage the property owners. Thank you. That's very helpful, and would look forward to the outcome of the mm -hmm. findings and ongoing conversations. Yeah. Thank you, Chief, for giving us something to look forward to. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So are we done with future agenda items? All yeah. set? Okay. I believe so. All right. Okay. Now ready for the motion? I make a motion to be the meeting. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we need to sign things, so don't go anywhere. That's a record. Okay. What's that? So